yeah, what can I say? It's a blessed day. It's Father's Day. It's a good day to be alive. <laughs> Amen. And happy Father's Day, my brother. Amen. I mean, I'm not a father myself, but I will be in the future by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. No, you have. I'm speaking to the seeds inside of you. <clears throat> God bless you. <laughs> Amen. I receive it. Definitely. Amen. I, know, I, I know that one day I'll be a father. Definitely. Oh, definitely. 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 That's for sure. That's good. That's good. So today, you know, yeah, you're sounding great. Can you hear any feedbacks today? Because last time there was feedback. No, it's brilliant. I can. Uh, I can't hear the echo. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed when I listened to the recording. I was like, no, you know. But you know, glory be to God. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. So yeah, let's let's talk, man. Let's talk. This is real talk. Father's Day, so we're gonna talk about man, isn't it? It's good stuff. It's a good place to start on Father's Day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So fire any questions at me, you're going to fire and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll answer them honestly and truthfully. Yes, yes. So, <coughs> yeah, tell us a little bit about your, your childhood, you know. What was your childhood yeah. like growing up? Well, at the age of six months old, I was given up for adoption, adoption because my mum was um, an alcoholic and uh, my right. dad was working away a lot. And um, unfortunately, to my dad's, um, you know, uh, to my dad's surprise, he'd come back to find out that the social services had took me away, and right. that actually my mum had, had signed me over to be uh, to be adopted. Wow! And uh, you know, he, he was devastated about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so then I was um, fostered in a foster ho foster home. Mm -hmm. for uh, for for most of my for for most of my childhood until I was about twelve, the same family that uh, fostered me then adopted me. Mm -hmm. So so then I had uh, so I, so I had two kind of two dads in my life, but my, my my biological dad would only come maybe once before Christmas, once at birthdays. So I only ever saw him maybe twice a year, uh, and then maybe sometimes I wouldn't see him at all. I might maybe get a card in the post. Mm. Uh, and that was kind of my relationship with my biological father. Um, growing up with my uh, my uh, foster dad, um, it seemed quite good um, until I hit my teens. But then mm -hmm. my 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 my, uh, my uh, foster dad or my adopted dad, unfortunately, became an alcoholic himself. Where oh, he was stressed wow. with work and stressed with stuff, so then my relationship with him was at a distance. If I need, if I if I ever wanted to spend time with him, I would have to go to where he is at the pub. So then mm. I would be around, you know, the pub and that kind of thing. Or even right. if we went away on on holiday uh, to destinations, it would be here's a few quid, go and play in the arcade or the amusements, and and, let, mm -hmm. and he'll he'll go off to the club and. And spend time in the club, and obviously no kids allowed. So mm. it was a very distant, very distant uh, from my father growing up, from both fathers. And obviously, it's heartbreaking when you get mm -hmm. told, you know, you've been adopted, and you know yeah. we're not your real parents, but you know your real dad. But you know, I I'd, I'd try to reach out to my real dad all the time, mm -hmm. but um, with the relationship he had with my mother. You know, he wasn't even sure if, if I was his or not because my oh, mum was wow. a bit crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. my mum was a mm -hmm. bit crazy and she'd done a lot of crazy things. So in his in his head, maybe it was easier for him to just um, to maybe even just decide perhaps I wasn't even his son. Wow. Um, yeah, which was quite sad growing up. Um, mm -hmm. But that's mm -hmm. just the way things went. In the early, so that's the that's the that's the, that's that's what happened growing up in the childhood uh, good, stages. Good. Okay, so um, now how how did that make you feel? Like now, I know you're a grown man. How did that make you feel at that point in time when you were a kid? Well, um, basically, it's. It. <clears throat> I mean, you want to get to know your dad. You you need to look to your dad for affirmation. Mm -hmm. You need to look to your dad to to ask questions growing up because you see all the other kids. Yeah, uh, they're there with their dads and they're having a great time. And mm -hmm. you know, dads are taking them out to play football. Or dads are doing stuff with the with the other kids. And you yeah. want to be a part of that. You want yeah. your dad to be a part of your life. And, mm -hmm. and because that wasn't there. Then I would look to the older, older generation, the older lads in the estate, the older lads. Mm. Uh, and I look to them for their affirmation. I look to yes. them to, to bring you up and to bring you up in life because you're looking mm -hmm. for answers. Yeah. Uh, but 
hammering and oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> so <laughs> you get tied up in whatever they're doing. And if they're doing things they shouldn't be doing, then you get involved mm-hmm. in that at a very early age. So for, for, for because I had that um, handicap, if, uh, as it were, then I, then I would um, <clears throat> obviously get involved with the old, older generation and get into mm-hmm. trouble. Yeah, um, wow. Yeah. Mm, and my, wow. my, my, my life would then spiral out of control because mm-hmm. of the, the lack of the lack of having a father figure to uh, implement discipline, implement good structure, uh, uh, and teach me the right way. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> right. So, so fast forward now. Um, how, how did you know? How did you get to know about God, and how did God transform your life? Mm. I mean, so <clears throat> as I was saying earlier about hanging around with the older generation or looking to them for affirmation, mm-hmm. it just got me to a place where I w- w- became a drug addict, uh, alcoholic, in and out of jail, uh, <clears throat> even to the point where I was homeless on the streets and even to the point of um, being in a psychiatric ward. So I got to a place at an early age of me, my late teens coming into my mm-hmm. 20s where um, I, I'd had enough of life. I'd come to, come to a place where I'd come to the end of myself. I, I didn't want to go to jail anymore. I didn't want to do the drugs anymore. And I'd had a conversation with my psychiatric nurse and said, look, you need to take me back in, to, to, to the ward. It's the only place I feel safe. Wow. And um, it was, and she turned me down. She said, look, we can't take you into the psychiatric ward, Gary, you know. Um, there's nothing else we could do. And I'd made up in my mind um, at that age that I was going to take my own life. Mm, and so mm. um, I was walking past uh, Manchester Cathedral on my way to commit suicide, and this thought pricked my conscience. And mm. it was a thought about he- heaven or hell, about if I took my life, would I go to heaven or would I go to hell? And as that thought pricked my conscience, I had this anger almost like anger against God to, to want to have it out with him, to find out if he's real, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I stormed into Manchester Cathedral and I went to the altar where I thought God was and I didn't say any fancy prayers. I just shouted out, God, if you're real, you need to come now. Jesus, mm-hmm. if you're real, you need to come now because I'm going to take my own life. Mm. And um, and that's where my, encounter, my first encounter with God, where I'd fallen to my knees, I'd come to the end of my life, I'd cried every cry, uh, so I cried every tear I could possibly cry. Mm. And uh, after spending 20 minutes broken on the floor on my face, uh, silence came that I'd never known before. Like you can hear a pin drop. It was just a stillness. And then uh, what I now know to be the voice of God spoke into my life and said, yes, I am your God. You are mm. my child. Now go and it shall be done. And uh, I got up from that place. I was, didn't have anywhere to go. I was homeless, but I knew the voice had spoken to me, the mm-hmm. authority behind it. And um, I stepped outside. I went outside. I opened up the door to the field to, to, to go outside. And there before me stood two evangelists which i later on found out were evangelists two men stood in the right place at the right time and i knew there was something about them i felt led to go and speak to them there was a glow of warmth coming from them and i walked up to them i said listen you don't know me my name's gary i said i'm messed up i've been messed up for years i was going to take my life today but i believe there may be some hope and they looked mm. at me and smiled and looked at each other and smiled because in their prayer time, God had told them to be here at this time, in this wow. place. Wow. And that's where my journey began 19 years ago, uh, just wow. outside Manchester the Cathedral. They, they asked me if I wanted to accept Jesus Christ into my life. I said, well, I've forgot to lose. I've tried everything else. You know, what do I have to do? <laughs> yeah. and, um, wow. and he said, we know a Christian recovery home we can take you to. We know a place where you can learn to know about Jesus, learn to know about God. And um, yeah, do what it takes to be able to have a, a fresh start and i said mm. take me there take me out wow. wow and wow. so 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 yeah that was that was my uh, first introduction to christ mm-hmm. i wouldn't say my first introduction because i'm um as a, as a young child i probably go to sunday school after primary yeah. school yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was my real first encounter of knowing the love of god or encountering the love of god uh, and so there, for the for the probably the, the next eight years, I wrestled with God because I didn't understand the love of God. I didn't understand that this God that uh, who was my heavenly Father, mm. I, I, because because I, I, the only Father I knew was a Father that disappointed me, a Father that mm. wasn't there for me, mm. a Father mm. that w- would punish me when I did wrong or 
to maybe not uh, maybe ignore me or turn his back on me. Mm -hmm. This God that I've now encountering, when I got into trouble, he came through for me. When I, when yeah. I when I fell fell down, he picked me up. When I got into mm -hmm. uh, situations where it felt like it was an impossibility and there was no way out, he, he got yeah. me out. And so yeah. and so gradually over eight years of wrestling with God and uh, wrestling with who he is, mm -hmm. little by little, I see God come through for me again and again and wow. again. And he won, he won me over. He wooed me with his love. Mm -hmm. He just kept pouring out his grace, pouring out his love. And even even when um, man, men couldn't handle me, I, I, I was that kind of character that, you know, men had probably given up working with me. I was a difficult character. I had a lot of issues. Mm. And they'd say, look, this, this guy's a bit wild, you know, this person. <laughs> and they, uh, we, we can't work with him. God put the love mm. of God in the man. And this man was no, no, no normal, no, no ordinary man. He was just an ordinary man, but compared to the men of God that tried to raise me up and found it difficult to, to work with me, this man had been touched by the love of God and he came into my life and uh, he, he worked with me and he stuck mm -hmm. by me and he spoke life into me and he mentored me and he, he was like a real spiritual father. Mm -hmm. And so so then knowing that I didn't have my, my natural parent as, as mm -hmm. a dad or even my adopted parent, here comes this man of God and steps in and took that role as a father mm -hmm. and fathered me with the spirit of God backing him up. And that that then began to open my heart to connect with my heavenly Father, and wow. to, to know that to, to know that God's not going to give up on me. God's mm -hmm. got, not going to throw the towel in on me. Mm -hmm. he, he's with me for the long haul. And it, it, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. And so won me over. Won me over. Wow, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. So now, um, tell me how you managed to have walked with God, you know, and be be in a place where you feel like there is there is that relationship that every man needs to have with God. You know, just just describe how your intimacy is like with God this very day. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it becomes such that you it, 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 it take all the religious uh, wrapping away, and it's 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 it's, 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 it's as simple as me and you talking now. Yeah. That my relationship with, with with God is such that um, you know. It's very simple. It's it's very simple. It's it's very clear um, that you, you you're open to you're open to hearing. Your heart soften every mm. day. You can have that. You can you can tell him how much you love him. You can tell him when you're struggling. You tell him when you're not feeling well. It's like there's there's no holds bars. There's nothing mm -hmm. stopping. It's, it's, it's like the scripture says, you know, uh, who can separate us from the love of God, yeah. or what yeah. can separate us from the love of God. And so, uh, in knowing that I can boldly become come before the throne of grace, knowing that I can boldly enter into His presence, present that um, you know it takes all the religious wrapping off, and I can just enter into a, a, a communion with God. I can enter in uh, to a conversation with God, and it's not like I have to think to myself, "Well, you know, I must have has to have to fast seven days first mm -hmm. because maybe mm -hmm. I've messed up, mm -hmm. or you know, I've made so many mistakes, and now I'm unholy and I can't come yeah. near God." Yeah. You know, all of that's taken away, and yeah, um, yeah and, and I can come come like a child to his to his father, and run into his arms, mm -hmm. and uh, knowing how much he loves me, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, wow. and have that kind of special relationship with God, mm -hmm. and you, you, you become accustomed to His voice, become accustomed to um, how how he, how He deals with me in my life. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it's um, it's got stronger and stronger and closer and closer over the years, and it's tested and it's tried, and, and so you know that it's real. Because mm -hmm. one thing, one thing, um, atheists say to me when I'm having a conversation with them is, "Well, you you only know about God because of of, of a building or because of a book or because of a pastor." And I say, "No, my friend." I say to them, "You just take away the Bible, and you take away the church, you take away the pastor, and I'll still have my faith in God because of the experience, the, yes, the powerful yes. encounters mm -hmm. and experiences that that you can't take away from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't take them the times away from me when I've encountered the." the powerful presence of God when I, when I, when I've had the miracles of healing inside my body and even in my mind, when I've gone through a uh, uh, a tremendous torment in, in my past mm -hmm. so you can't you can't you can't feel me you see mm -hmm. god has done what no doctor could do no no psychiatrist could do no mm -hmm. jail system no nothing yeah. else in this world mm -hmm. could do what god has done in my life 
Wow, wow. That's that's really, really powerful uh, because I think sometimes it can be difficult to explain God to people, you know, like, yeah. and as you're sharing your testimony, I can see how you have walked with God and then how he has been doing stuff in your life. So um, what is it that you might want to tell other men? Because one of the things that God said to me, that was years ago, you know, when I got born again, that whenever you're outside my presence, you become uh, obsolete. You have no power. You have no strength. You cannot do nothing without mm. my presence. That changed me. That motivated me to make a decision. And I had this intensive um, conviction within my heart that, wow, if I decide that I'm going to step out of the, the, the presence of God, then everything that I do is led by the flesh. It is mm -hmm. all to do with, you know, it's logical. It's nothing to do with what he is, uh, what he has actually called me to do. Do you get what I'm saying? So in your life, how can you encourage or inspire other men to actually have that relationship with God in order for them to lead and govern? Well, it's like um, having a, a, not some. I mean, it's, it's the father figure, but it's also the coach. It's also the counselor. It's also the comforter. It's all the things that um, I always say to people: God wants the best for you more than you want the best for yourself. Mm. God wants to break into your life more than you want God to break into your life. I mean, mm -hmm. God wants so much for you more than you want it for yourself. So, having having known that, that he he he's more than prepared everything ahead of you to walk into and to, and to mm. do, that 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 gives you the unction and the 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 excitement and the passion to want yeah. to find out what it is that God's got for you. I yes. mean, you only have to look at what God's created in the world and mm -hmm. uh, what God's done in the universe and what what God's done on the earth to think that the God of the universe wants a relationship with me, the mm -hmm. God of the universe, the God of yeah. the Creator yeah. of all things. Has got a mm -hmm. plan for my life, then, mm -hmm. then, man, I, I, in my finite three pound brain, I could come up with some good stuff, but I'm pretty sure God, who's outside of my little brain, can yeah. come up with a much better plan. Mm -hmm. So, why would I not want to get a hold of it? Why would I yes. not want to find yes. out what it is? And so, mm -hmm. that should be the, the ethos, the passion, the drive, mm -hmm. the thing mm -hmm. that gets you up in the morning and says, Wow, I'm alive today. There's a purpose and plan for my life. There's a dignity mm -hmm. and destiny and a belonging where before I didn't have a, a, a dignity and destiny belonging. Mm -hmm. I had nothing. I was hopeless. And here comes God. He's picked me up out of the pit he, he, where I was busted, disgusted. I couldn't be trusted. Tore mm -hmm. up from the floor up, wreck up from the <laughs> neck up. Yeah. And here comes God. He's transformed my life. He's done something in my life which is real. So mm -hmm. now I've got a love for God. So find out this, this part of the journey has already been amazing. Mm -hmm. It's already yeah. blown my mind. Yeah. yeah. And, and how yeah. much more is that the next five years, 10 years, 20 years down the line that God has got in store? And grab a hold of it with both hands, you know, mm -hmm. press on mm -hmm. towards the prize. Forget about the past. Listen, I want to always say to people, listen, if you have uh, issues with your history, the, ne the next step, the next thing you need to do is start running towards your destiny. Because mm -hmm. by default, the, 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 the more that you run towards your destiny, you'll distance yourself from your history. Mm -hmm. And that's, before that's you know it, you'll look, you'll look around in a couple of years and you'll be doing things that you never thought you'd, you'd ever yeah. be doing in Christ. You that's know, and that's how, it is for, that's how it is for me. I'm excited that's, that's and, really and I'm good. loving it and it's mm. brilliant. So wow. I wouldn't want to miss it. And I, I know what it's like to, to, to think, you know, oh, I'll just have a normal life, whatever normal is. You know, I'll just, uh, you know, I'll do things apart from church or I'll do things away from God. And I've tried that and it mm. doesn't work when God mm. has placed his hand upon your life when god has touched your life when god has mm -hmm. done something he's put an imprint on your life you never be the same again and mm -hmm. so all, all you can do is is look to god and live for god and allow god to to, to, to lead you and guide you and I, i'll say this one last thing for people that mm -hmm. struggle with control because i used to struggle with giving over control to god and trusting mm -hmm. god in areas where i had control of and i always say to people listen don't get in the passenger seat because you can still reach over and grab the wheel don't get in the mm -hmm. back seat because mm -hmm. you can still reach mm -hmm. over and grab the wheel yeah. just get in the boot get in the boot <laughs> and let god I, I just just let god drive you to yeah, your destiny let god take you to good. where he asked for you <laughs> that's good man that's that's really good <laughs> awesome so 
So to a man right now that's 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 struggling, that feels like you know what God probably have, God has left me, you know. What advice would you give to a man who feels like God has left them? Um, look up and call out upon the name of God, and it will, listen. God will never, ever, ever give up on you, ever. And I found that out because even in Christ, I've done things I'm not uh, proud of. But that was me testing the love of God because I needed to know for real that this God wasn't going to let me down, that this God was real. And so I tested the love of God. I tested its, its, its parameters, its barriers. I went, I went to, the, to, the, to, the, to the foremost to find out if I do all this, is the love of God enough? And, and, and you know, Paul says that his grace is sufficient. You know, I mean, look at Apostle Paul. He he he'd murdered Christians. I mean, I've never murdered a Christian. I've never murdered anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, apart from perhaps when Christ says, if you hate someone in your heart, you've practically murdered them. Mm -hmm. But listen, if, 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 if Apostle Paul can, 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 could have killed and persecuted Christians and had them put to death, but the grace of God in his life called him to be an apostle, then mm -hmm. how much more the grace of God on my life a nobody from the backside of Manchester running around doing madness, you know, and all kinds of craziness. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but he's placed a calling upon my life, and his his love is coming to my life. How much more for you, brother? How much more for you, man of God? That even though you feel like the, the God has left you, you feel like you're in a dark place. You feel like your your sin is more than what Christ has done on the cross. Listen, when Jesus said it is finished. He mm. said it is finished, which it's means finished. that his sacrifice is good enough. You don't mm. have to add to it. You don't have to do anything to add to it. It is more than good enough. The blood of Jesus is more than good enough for any amount of sin that you commit in your past, present, mm. or future. Wow. Yes. And that's the Savior we've got. That's the Father we've got. When, when Listen, when Jesus came to save us, to seek and mm. save the lost, he, he, he finished his, he accomplished it. He accomplished his mission. And, and then we just have to grab a hold of it. He's done everything for us. It's just a case mm -hmm. of us accepting it, receiving it, and uh, allow it, allowing God to work out the rest the rest of the stuff. Mm, awesome. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Now, that's, that's really, like, great, great uh, wisdom and um, advice. Um, so going forward now, um, as you know, it's Father's Day. What, what is it that you would want other fathers to know to in order for them to be better fathers? Wow, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> well, in order to, I mean, in order to be, to, uh, to be good fathers. It, yeah, because, it's just, because it's, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Because like, uh, based on your experience of what you said that, you know, in order for you to uh, find time with your dad, you ended up going where you was and you ended up like, mingling with certain things that you should have seen and you know and then that kind of like influenced you in some some way so now looking at your past what what is it that you would want to encourage fathers to to do and not to do in front of their children in order for them now to be in a place where they become great fathers and expose their children to great things well i think what every child wants is he wants his father to be to take interest in his life and and what I've learned now is that I, I, I want God to be a part of my life and everything I do. So from waking up to going to sleep, there's not a part of my day that I don't want God to be interested in. And God himself wants to be a part of it. He's there, ever present. He's ever present help. He's, and so in that, it's like if you have a child, you know, although you have your stuff to deal with in life, whether it's work or part of your marriage, you know, include your child as much as you can it, 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 which is safe into your life and also include yourself into their life mm -hmm. as much as you can so vice versa you he he's got you included in his life in what he's doing and you're including him into your life so he feels part of the family feels connected like mm -hmm. we do with, with with god daddy god what's going on you know we want to hear from god what are your what's your heartbeat what's your vision you know what are you what are you saying god what are you what are you doing god mm -hmm. and so it is with with, with, with our with, with our fathers our natural father mm -hmm. we want to know daddy what are you doing what's going yeah. on daddy you know we want to be a part of, of mm -hmm. what's going on and the same with god he says son 
what, what are you doing? Where are you? What's going mm-hmm. on? How are you mm-hmm. feeling? How you? How, what's going on? You, you know, you can tell me how you feel. Speak to me. You know, communicate mm-hmm. with me. So it's key. To, communication is key. Yes. You know, if if, if we if we, if me and my dad had that communication growing up, then perhaps I never would have turned out the way I did. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, things happen f- the way they did. Um, the part. Of, God has orchestrated it to where I am today, but a lot of things can be avoided. You know, mm-hmm. I think one of the wisest sayings that I've heard is that any fool can learn from a mistake, but a wise person learns from instruction. Mm-hmm. So if there's fathers mm-hmm. out there today that can hear these instructions, mm-hmm. then get get involved with what your kids are doing, back them yeah. up, and be there for them, and yeah. allow them to be involved with what you're doing. No, that's that's really good. That's really good. Thank you so much for for sharing that. Um, and I feel like uh, you know, you, you, there is um, there is that that heart that you have, you know, and what you're saying, I can feel like it's coming from your heart. And I really appreciate that because that's one thing that lacks within um, within our our time. I believe that there's the, people are not being real with with some of the things that we're going through as as fathers and as men so uh, i really appreciate you sharing even your testimony and trying to bring people to that understanding of um how god like literally covers you and just being there to listen to the voice of god and being directed by him and having that intimacy with him so before you leave what is it that you would want to just say even to the men of god you know in regards to being great fathers, you know, because some people look up to their spiritual authority figures as role models, as fathers, and as, you know, as dads, you know, what is it that you would want to say to them on this day? Yeah, I mean, I'll back up a little bit, but I'll fit that in um, as quickly as I can, because I know we've pressed the time. No, it's okay. Is that... Mm before my my fostered my adopted dad passed away three years ago i was able through my relationship with god to to really have reconciliation with my dad Mm -hmm. um there was a lot of bitterness between us um, because he'd been an alcoholic that we didn't have the best of relationships but through through my relationship with god and the healing that god had done in my heart Mm -hmm. i could spend the last four months of his life living with him uh, mm-hmm. being a testimony to him, ministering to him, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, bringing him to Christ, praying for him. Uh, and then even as he passed away, I was able to pray for him and lead him to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And then uh, not, not only that, from there, I was then able to ha- um, strengthen my relationship with my natural father. That over, over the last three, four, five years, our relationship's got so strong now that he, mm-hmm. he he's 100% con- convinced and assured that I'm his son, that all the doubts from the past where he thought maybe I wasn't his son have gone away. And we have such a strong like bond more than ever before a uh, mm. father son like so so god has healed the relationships mm. between me and my fathers and so what i would say to other people um is one thing one of the mistakes i made growing up is that i look to spiritual uh, spiritual f- people uh, like pastors to try and take the place of my father replace. oh you, you, replace. Just, you just said something right there yeah just... to to replace my father and 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 and, and so that that that, that, yeah. caused, that caused a bit of trouble between me and my pastor because mm. i looked up to him as my father and i tried to put an expectation on him yes. that he could never fulfill could not and meet. so I, he could not meet so if there's one thing i need to say to brothers mm. out there is is nobody can take the place of your father. Of your biological you may have spir- father, yeah. Of your biological father, yes. yeah. Good. I mean, God will ordain ordain people in the spirit to be a spiritual father to you, and mm-hmm. they will come and connect with you, but you must never, ever put the expectation of your biological father on somebody else. They can't carry mm-hmm. it, they can't, meet, they can't uh, meet up to it. And so when that happened to me, when I was doing it, I, was, I, beca- I came away with disappointment, I came away with rejection, Yes. But later on, I understood that I never should have done that. You shouldn't have and done so, that. Yes. That's, no, that's, no. That's, no you, you touched on something that I was going to touch on with uh, with my pastor later on. But because you brought that up, and I was glad because one thing that he even said, I was listening to him this morning, was um, you honor your parents. Because the Bible says, honor your parents. Yeah, you need to acknowledge them. You need to recognize that they're there. They're still alive. Mm-hmm. 
and then um and then the, the bible actually says you know you you need to um they say honor your your, your father and the mother so your days may be blended and then he still say that you need to honor your father in the lord right mm. so yeah. there is that thing that we need to now know how to decipher these things so that we know that yeah when yeah. we're disappointed by our biological parents we don't actually write them off and then now we look mm. up to spiritual parents and then replace yeah. our biological parents. That's right. That's, that's right, ungodly. Yeah. That's not ungodly. If and if anybody perpetuates that doctrine, that is not scriptural. That mm. is idolatry, literally. You know, because yeah. that, that that's yeah. spiritual. The spiritual authority becomes abusive because you are now making sure that these children now hate their parents and then look up to you as a father, mm. which is something that, yeah. you know, it's it's a conversation that, you know, I'm glad that you brought that up because it's just something that has been in my heart. And I've seen it quite a lot in churches where, yeah. you know, some pastors who support their spiritual sons not to speak to their, to their biological parents because of issues yeah. or stuff that has happened and not try to actually mend that relationship. Mend. Yeah, because that yeah. is needed. That is God's will. That is God's plan for that family unit to be strong and to be intact. So when that is dislocated, you know, you will find out that the expectations that you you, you spoke of, I I have done that before, but I had to mature and grow and, and and say to myself, you know what, I should not confuse biological father's position and purpose mm -hmm. in my life and spiritual father's. Uh, position and, and 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 purpose in my life once we once i got that right i, I wasn't disappointed man i just kind of knew that okay this is how i have to function and this is how i have to manage this relationship so i'm really glad that you brought that up yeah very important <laughs> yeah no that's 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 really key that's really key and this thing needs to be spoken of because a lot of hurt even within within uh, our, our 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 society and the men is because of this in the church, you know, mm. when you're expecting your spiritual father to be there for you financially, to be there for you emotionally, psychologically, and blah, blah, blah. But no, he's just a spiritual father. Probably he's yeah. just there to just make sure he pour God into you and that's it. But for you, you want more because you're trying to replace your father with that. And I've that's seen right. it, I've experienced it myself. So yeah man. Uh, and then you go away you go, you go away feeling disappointed and rejected but really the man of god never did anything wrong it's because you put yeah. that expectation upon him uh, yeah. to, to fulfill something he was never called to fulfill yeah 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 absolutely i agree i agree uh thank you so much brother gary um it was an amazing time that i just spent with you and you know looking forward to more times like this and i say after mm. quarantine we're definitely gonna link up and do some crazy things for god all right so god bless you <laughs> thank Amen. you so much for joining Amen. in in the prayers and today for father's day god bless You're you welcome. enjoy father's day all right i will do bye-bye